Okay. So uh, today I'm going to go through um, a Christmas calendar. Uh, it's a, like a computer science uh, puzzle uh, thing called the uh, dual calendar. So it's not really security or or CTF related, but it's it's still pretty uh, entertaining. So it was a Christmas calendar that ran through December. So every weekday uh, they released um, yeah a computer science related puzzle that you had to solve. So uh, in total there were. Uh, 17 uh, puzzle plus one extra because uh, they um, did a mistake and had to replace one challenge but they kept the old one just for fun um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through this um, and show how you how you would solve them and try to explain the, the thought process in, in some of these puzzles um, yeah so uh, uh well let's just start so uh this was the uh the website they had uh, and and these are each each day so i'm going to start on on day um yeah day 0 was just uh, like a test thing we can we can have a look at it so um it was basically just like it was open before the competition started so it was basically just saying like welcome to the testing area uh, yada yada please imagine you have one apple uh, then uh, I, uh, the duck comes to your house and gives you another apple and then this happens five more times how many apples do you have please enter the amount and then here there was a, a box where you could enter your solution so this was this was just to show how, how the system works so yeah, you would just enter um, six and you would solve the challenge. Um, that's not very interesting. Uh, let's uh, actually start uh, looking at the first actual uh, challenge. So um, the difficulty of these varies um, a lot, I would say. They start out uh, pretty easy, as you will see, and, and they progress uh, to quite tricky towards the end. Um, so anyway, day one, the first day of December. Um, so in this solution, in this challenge, we're given a link here to the terms of service. So let's open that, uh, and this is, of course, then a, a ridiculously long uh, document. So there are, of course, various uh, approaches to this, like. I would assume that the interesting stuff is at the bottom, so you can just load all this and try to go to the bottom, but it seems to be like a whole lot of stuff. Um, so um, looking at uh huh. So looking at the source and going uh, down, uh, we can see that uh, they have some kind of JavaScript. I guess it like bounces us up again uh, while we scroll. But uh, here we get uh, the password soul, which is the uh, solution to the first day. Um, and... Uh, I think that was the solution. Um, yeah. So uh, that's just, just look at the end of the page and you get the solution. Uh, not not too complicated, but the the thing was that if you try to do it in like in the browser actually running, it would like this would never end because it it does some JavaScript trickery. So you would have to either like download the page and or look at the source or something like that to <coughs> actually get to the end okay moving on to so then there was a weekend and then, then on the monday um we have uh day four so uh 
um, here. I'm gonna bring up my uh, the work I did. Um, so <clears throat> in this challenge, I'm gonna change the text size here a little bit. Uh, in this challenge, uh, you were given a zip file uh, called uh, hardwork.zip. Uh, and it contained um, some Java code. And in the description here, um, they said that to accomplish this feat, they had to download the best editor that they could find. Uh, okay, so let's look at this uh, hard work. We have some Java uh, code files and compiled class files. Uh, seems to be like three, the so one for uh, each uh, class, like one Java file, one class file, and one of these ctxt files, which uh, I do not recognize. And then there's a package.bluej. So, uh, BlueJ is an editor. Uh, so, um, um, actually, since I actually did this on another computer, we can redo it here. Um, so, let's install this uh, BlueJ editor. So, yeah, we can. Meanwhile, we can look at the Java code to see if there was actually anything there. But looking at it, we just see like these are just some, yeah, random Java classes without anything interesting. And here in the in the main class, there's like a hint. Maybe you should try asking BlueJ instead. Uh, and there's nothing interesting in any of these. They're basically just the same pieces of code repeated. Um, so, um, um, if we start, uh, we start BlueJ and we open the project. Oh, so then we get this um, like UML diagram, and we can look here. Look here that this says this is a B, this is an A, and this is an R. So it says bar. So that's uh, the solution to uh, day four or the second uh, the second challenge. It's a <clears throat> clever uh, little trick. Uh, and uh, I think my basically re reasoning here was like first start looking at all of this code and realizing that there can be nothing of interest in the actual code. So then there is nothing about this, like how it's uh, packaged or something. Uh, so just opening up in the in the program as they hinted, and yeah, we found this. Um, so. Um, yeah, moving on to the next challenge, uh, day five, the third challenge. Uh, this is a little bit funny actually, because I don't remember uh, in what order or so uh, this happened. So let's uh, see. Um, okay, so in this uh, challenge, this is actually uh, a little bit sad that they don't keep this when you have solved it. Solved it, but. Uh, basically, in this challenge, you were given uh, an image uh, <coughs> here called uh, magic.png. I'm gonna. So, looks like this. Um, 
it's yeah it seems to be just uh, a lot of noise um, but um, so so how do you tackle this this one uh, actually took uh, um, slightly longer uh, than I had hoped but um, I mean when you get an image like this what I typically typically do is first of all I check uh, like the metadata uh, of uh, of the image to see if there is if anything uh, hidden there and then we can also check like that this is actually only an image and not uh, anything else so we can analyze uh, the file and see like is this really just an image and it seems to be um, just a PNG uh, image yeah it, it ends with the PNG and marker so we'll just assume that it's just uh, a regular uh, PNG file okay so then there is not something in the image that we're looking for so could there be some kind of like uh, st uh, stenography um, Unfortunately, all the all this noise is only like ten different colors, so uh, it's a little bit tricky encoding some kind of information. And we also see that there is like there is some kind of repetition, like there is something here um, in the middle of the of the image uh, that's being repeated. So yeah, I I, I uh, looked at this. Uh, in, in various way but uh, after a while I what I did was basically <clears throat> that um, I open up this image in, a, in an image editor and uh, let's see if actually we can recreate this process so um, we So, um, um, we duplicate this um, this layer, uh, bring down the uh, opacity of uh, of it to. Uh, like 50 percent and then we bring up the uh, I'm so bad with GIMP um, um, So we start moving the the top layer, which has a fifty percent opacity, to the left, and then th there you, we had something. So let's move back. So here it says we have your duck pass cat. Um yeah so uh as someone pointed out in the chat this uh, is uh, uh a stereogram so actually you can just solve this by just looking at it and like crossing your eyes uh but uh, I, I like to do it in a more um like digital way um so basically what we see here is uh we have your duck pass cat. So cat is uh the solution to uh this challenge. Uh great. Um the next day, <clears throat> day six, uh the fourth challenge. So um uh, here we were also given an image uh, called uh, uh, meta meta dot uh, jpeg. 
So, um, yeah, I just, it was basically, yeah, it looks, let's just look at it. Looks like this, which is the uh, chapter house of the computer science uh, student, um, which is uh, which is called uh, Meta. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll just uh, do the same thing I usually do when I get an image. Like we can check uh, the metadata, and uh, oh, it says the password is Utopian. So that was uh, the challenge. So, um, like from from coming from my perspective, this uh, was much easier than uh, the day before. Um, but um, yeah. It's uh, that's basically what I did. I cut an image. I checked the metadata, which is also very fitting considering that uh, like the image is called uh, Meta Meta. So yeah, um, there's nothing more to it really. It's that's just one of the one of the um, analysis things I do when I get some kind of puzzle with an image. Uh, so the password is uh, Utopian. Um. Yeah, and we can move on to day seven. So the fifth challenge, day seven. Um, <clears throat> so this was called uh, "Got Good," uh, and this is the, the Git logo, and we're given a link to uh, a zip file uh, here. So if we look at this zip file, superserver.zip. Uh, yeah, it contains uh, a git repo. So let's see, I'll just move the one I solved. Okay, so we unzip the zip file. And we go into uh, super server. So um, we can just check like to do it has a uh, commit password, revert password done, read about ref log, that's a hint. Uh, and then we can check the readme file. This is my super secret super project. The passwords file is only for our eyes. <clears throat> okay, so though this is a very typical um, um, thing that can happen with a Git uh, project. So basically, um, if you have a Git repository, uh, so a git, git works in the way that uh, like every commit is um, uh, is kind of like a checkpoint in time and uh, has like a parent uh, a parent commit uh, all of them except the the first commit which is like the root commit so it's it's a tree um, but the way you find uh, one of the like branches in this tree is you have uh, yeah, you have a branch. So typically you have at least like the master branch and you can have, have other branches. Um, but what happens if you do a commit and uh, on one of your branch and then you revert the branch back to the previous commit and do another commit and start going down like another path, then you will have a commit that's not really uh, reachable from 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 anywhere because there's no like convenient way to reference to it. So that's kind of like a a, a lost uh, commit, and I would just like guess that this is what it's about. So if we do just like git log, uh, we see all the all the previous commits done on um, on this branch. So uh we can for example we can take one of these uh, hashes and we can uh go to it uh oh have i done changes oh uh Okay, so uh, there is some funky stuff going on with file permissions when I have this shared directory uh, between um, my virtual machine and 
So um, yeah, let's just do it uh, completely inside the. Uh, I'll just move the file uh, inside. So this is just a this is a, just a technical thing due to uh, my setup. So this is not really important for the challenge. So, okay, let's start over. Uh, we unzip uh, the project. We go into this. Um, we try to check out this like first uh, commit. So we can see what we have then. We have a readme file. Okay, it doesn't really help us. So where, where is this uh, lost stuff? So we can look at the ref log. So here, it, this contains kind of like a, um, uh, like a log file of all of all the different commits uh, we have done, and this is not really ordered. Like this is not related necessarily to the current branches. This is just like all of the commits. So here we have a commit called add password. So let's check out that one. Oh, this is called file called passwords, and there you have uh, a password uh, absent. So basically, what we did was use the ref log to find uh, the commit that's not really reachable from um, from any branch uh, you work with. <clears throat> so. Um, Oh, yeah. Um. Okay, I'll sort it out later. Anyway, absent is the password for day seven. Um, awesome. Uh, moving to day eight, the sixth challenge. Uh, I think this is uh, sponsored by uh, Bon Touch. In this challenge, um, we are given uh, another zip file. So let's go to day eight. Um, this is called Bon Bon Touch solution, uh, which seems to be an Android. Uh, project a lot of files so yeah we have uh, um, some some gradle uh, stuff and uh, let's look in the app thing is there anything in libs no uh, do we have the source files seems like we do right um so we go down the tree and we get get these files um so that's some uh kotlin or kotlin code the new uh like uh, default language for doing android development pretty pretty neat language it runs uh, on the jvm so you don't have to write uh, java instead you can write this so um, we're given these four uh, source files and um, we're trying to find something that's uh, actually interesting. Um, so what, uh, what do we have here? Some, uh, some setting up, some callback, some actions, not really something that uh, catches my eyes um, here is something that's look interesting this click uh, and there's some different actions here uh, but it's I mean I don't really want to go through all the details here uh, and then you get here and here is something interesting uh, 
they create some kind of uh, uh, char array and then they set the elements to it uh, in this by taking the um, <coughs> they modify the values uh, in the array and then they return this string. So this looks interesting. Like this could be some kind of decoding function for for the password. <laughs> so what do we do? What do we need to have to be able to figure this out? So what what is it depending on? Um, so this uh, function takes some string s as an input. Uh, we have some value here called gamma and delta, and they are used inside there in the calculation. Okay, but we have those values. That's good. And then we have this. They do like pi to int, so that's just three. Um, so what do they do? Okay, so they take this string, and the input string, and <clears throat> convert it to this array, and then they modify the value. So we need uh, we need to know what's coming in here. So we search for this normalize uh, function. It's not called in here. Oh, it's called from here. And it's called with the uh, m version variable, which is initialized here to um, this string. Uh, so they take this string called text you. So let's go and find this one. So in Android, uh, you, your strings are stored in uh, like resource files, uh, different XML files. Uh, so let's look in strings.xml. Uh, that's not one we're looking for. Uh, okay, here. So here is uh, a variable called uh, text view and it's nine characters long, which corresponds very nicely to the nine entries we're modifying here. Okay, so we can take this string, these values, this thing, and this whole thing, and we'll just re-implement this routine in outside, um, outside the Android project in, in a Python program. So this is just a small Python program I created. Start with this uh, string and then basically just translate what we're doing here in the Java code into uh, Python here. And then we run it and we get this password <coughs> replicant. So this is how I solved um, the challenge. You could also have the, um, actually like compiled the app and played. I think it's a bunch of buttons that you're supposed to press in the correct order or something. But um, you know, we don't have time for that. Um, and uh, I think a lot of the other pe uh, other people solving this challenge actually went that way, uh, which resulted in me being like ten minutes faster than the fastest. Uh, other player so and I think it was a little bit misleading because on the day before they basically said as a hint that uh, you would probably need Android Studio um, on this day uh, so a lot of people had a lot of uh, troubles with that but uh, the source code was available so you can just like re read the source code instead and that worked fine um, cool so uh let's move on so there was a weekend and then on the monday there is challenge uh the, the seventh challenge day 11. um so here we're given a, a link to a website let's see if this still works okay cool um so this looks like a, a copy of myspace called duckspace uh, and we have a login field. So the first thing that comes to mind uh, also says down here like powered by uh, SQL. So the first thing that comes to mind is uh, an SQL injection. Um, 
So first off, let's let's just do like SQL. I mean, I just assume that they wouldn't have anything too complicated since this isn't really like a security challenge. It's uh, like a general item. So let's just start super basic. Uh, just do like uh, injection, like the easiest possible thing. Okay, did not work. Let's try like admin and this in the password. Oh, okay, so we're logged in, but it says like red herring. Um, you're free to stay here as long as you want. So, okay, so we kind of did something right, but it didn't quite work. Uh, but if we look in the uh, description again, we're, we're looking for this character called uh, uh, Duncan. So maybe instead of admin, we should use uh, his name, and then we do like the basic SQL injection. Oh, and that worked! Wow! And then we get these three pieces uh, of a QR code, so we can simply uh, download them assemble them and then um, decoding the QR code says I am going to McKinleyville don't follow me I'm perfectly fine and don't need any help from anyone um, and in the description it said like where could he have, he have gone so the answer to this challenge is McKinleyville uh, I'm just gonna like stop for a few seconds here and just explain the like the basic SQL injection uh, if you haven't uh, seen it before. So, in a login page like this, you probably have uh, like an SQL query that uh, looks something like. something like this um, so the, the user provides uh, <clears throat> input and you check if there is a username and password in the database that matches this so if we input what we did um, actually this should be yeah, okay let's Okay, so if our input is this, then the resulting query, because if you don't do any, if you don't take any like security precautions, then uh, the code will just like copy paste these together, and you will get code. Oh, should be one here. And uh, this will be the resulting query which says like we're looking for a user where the username is admin and the password is um, empty or one equals one and this is always true so the query um, so this part will uh, always be uh, true and we will select uh, the user uh, admin but in our case, we did it with this uh, other user. So that's basically, that's like, uh, yeah, baby's first uh, SQL injection. And there's like a ton of resources on it on the internet if you want to learn more. Um, okay. So uh, the next challenge, day 12. So in this we're given uh, a port, uh, an IP address and a port, uh, and they talk about uh, the mud tricks, and this is a recurring uh, part uh, to this uh, tool calendar. They ha have had it for a few years. So basically, you can connect with Netcat to this, um, and uh, it's a uh, like a inspired by a classical like uh, mod 
so you can issue commands so here we can only go one way like to the east so let's say go east uh, and and then we meet the white fluffy bunny um, and the bunny says follow me so it's a little bit of a matrix reference here maybe uh, and it says hopping down the hall okay so maybe should, we should go to the hall so to the north there's a hallway go north uh, and now someone is uh, messaging me within the mud and uh, so there is someone in a suit and we can choose between running or fighting and let's do what I did originally so I said fight uh, and that didn't work very well so we're back uh, at the start so let's redo it let's go east go north to the hallway okay we run this time um, there's a strange door you have no choice but en to enter so let's enter the matrix or you know what other reference we want to do and then we meet Morpheus and uh, uh, and he asks if we, if we know what uh, he's talking about. Oh, and yes, we know. And uh, and then we can choose between the red pill and the blue pill. So we choose the red pill. And we need focus. So let's focus. And now we're back. And now we can hopefully fight him. So we fight him. And you can, you're now free to leave the matrix with your newfound confidence with super emphasis you're sure to find uh, Duncan so uh, uh, confidence is the solution so it's just like uh, you just play through uh, the story and uh, you win and you get the password uh, nothing complicated with that <clears throat> moving on to challenge 13 okay so this is where the challenges start being not only about oh, like technical skills, but there's also some like puzzling or uh, pop cultural references or whatever. Um, so in this um, challenge, we are given an audio file, phone call dot uh, web. So um oh yeah uh, wrong day okay um let's see i'm gonna like pause my music and turn on the sound here and we can see if i'm able to that's it i just murdered them all in cold blood they didn't want to give me the password. I have one part. Zero, 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 one. Yeah, and then he reads um, 40 bits grouped in uh, into five bytes. I'm sure they know zero, 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 one. I'm sure they know the other part, but they didn't want to tell me. They didn't want to sing. So I just murdered them in cold blood. Okay, so this took me a while to figure out, but uh, the clue here is um, like the strange emphasis on sing and uh, uh, and this reference to uh, cold blood. So, uh, first of all, uh, I wrote down those forty, uh, those forty bits. So these are the forty bits uh, written down, and uh, there's also Uh, I'm not sure where I got this other th 
there was some uh, other clue here, but basically, oh yeah, here. So in this text, they reference victims Joe, Thom, and Gus. So that's very like specific choice of names. So if we search for this, we found we find some band called Alt J. So let's look them up. Some uh, okay, some indie rock band. Um, okay, here is some reference to some bits that's interesting, and if you search for uh, Cold Blood, they apparently they have a song called Cold Blood, which includes these eight bits. Um, so um, that's interesting. Uh, we put this together. So um, okay, so these five numbers are just. Um, the the five bits written in in decimal and this is the eight bits from uh, from the song so first of all if we look at that number uh, that's uh, 115 which is in ascii it's an s uh, so maybe if we combine that number with those other numbers in some way. Um, first, I tried doing like addition and subtraction, uh, but in the end, uh, I tried uh, XORing them together. So, for every number in this um, list, we XOR it with this uh, S from from the song, and uh, out comes uh, water. So that's the solution to this uh, challenge. And uh, I mean, I guess the reasoning here is like whenever you get some some numbers that you think you want to combine in some way, uh, like one thing that you should never forget is like the XOR operation is because it's like the uh, cryptography operation. It's uh, yeah, it's used everywhere. Uh, it has some nice properties, uh, which is very suitable for uh, a lot of uh, stuff uh, encryption related. So the next challenge, day fourteen. Oh yeah, okay. There was this one also took me way too long uh, to solve originally. So first of all, uh, they talk a lot about primes. Uh, in this text, and then we're given this, which uh, looks a lot like um, a brainfuck program. So let's just look for brainfuck interpreter online. Okay, we copy paste this, but notice here in the beginning, this um, will either not uh, like either it will just run once or it will create an infinite loop. Also, we see that this line is like longer than the others. So, like if we run this, yeah, it never finishes. So, let's just try removing that part and running it again. And then we get it prints out cipher 2468950. Okay. That's uh, that's something, right? Um, so, um, and we have these references to primes. So maybe if we factor this number into its prime factorization, so we can go into Wolfram Alpha. We get the factorization. It's two times five times five times eleven times sixty-seven times sixty-seven. Uh, so it's this list, and this is where I 
uh, it took me way too long time uh, to solve. Just closing down these other stuff. So, um, I tried different things like um, taking these as uh, you know different different combinations of these as ASCII numbers and uh, yeah a, a lot of stuff that didn't really make sense. So uh, then at some point uh, I realized that if we look at the first few uh, prime numbers, I mean all of these factors are small uh, prime numbers. So if we take them as we we count them and see like which uh, prime number they are. So like two is the first prime number and five is the uh, third prime number and so on. And we use these as uh, indices into the alphabet. Um, then maybe we get something. So I just took here a list of the first few. Uh, prime numbers and then counted which uh, index they are and then we zero uh, index this so it's the zero of prime number the second and so on and uh, we take the alphabet and we index into it and print it out and we get the word access now I think this is a little bit bullshit because I mean this can only work if you have a word with uh, like increasing letters like sorted in alphabetical order uh, because otherwise there is no way to know which order they should uh, go in but um, yeah fine uh, we got the password um, so uh, um, so access is the solution to this um, puzzle um okay 15 oh this one was uh, pretty cool so this is um um there's a lot of references to quake and you're given uh, a link to a virtual machine and also two sticky notes one of them says uh username password vare vare and this one says fast inverse square root and if you know your like computer science history or trivia uh you know about the first fast inverse square root algorithm uh used in the quake engine which is uh, a brilliant piece of code and um, okay that's interesting so we download the virtual machine and so uh, you get this uh, vm.ova file which you can import into uh, VirtualBox for example and uh, um, due to my like streaming setup I won't uh, do that because I don't have VirtualBox inside this uh, virtual machine. But basically, what happens is it it boots uh, a basic uh, Debian uh, system, and you can log in with the password on the uh, on the sticky note, vare vare, and you get to uh, this uh, home. You get to a home directory, which is uh, seemingly empty. But if you, because like these files were not there uh, to start with. But if you look closer, you see there's a bash history and a dot SSH um, directory. So we can look at the uh, bash history file and we see that someone cloned this uh, git repository. Uh, Okay, they wrote fuck, and then they uh, wrote logout. Okay, interesting. So if you try to clone this, uh, let's um, so 
So if you try to clone this, uh, you get uh, access denied. And actually, if you did this within the virtual machine, you would get uh, it would ask for the password to um, to the private key. So if we look in the .ssh, and here I made a major mistake. So here we have these files. You have a private key, a public key, and a known hosts file. So in my sloppiness, I just thought that, okay, that's the private key, that's the public key, uh, but I don't have the password, so what do I do? However, if you look at the public key, it says here the passphrase is PHP is a well-designed scripting language. Uh, so missing this uh, took me on a way too long detour trying all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, then you have so there you have the, the password for the private key, and with it you can clone that repository, and you get this directory Quack of three uh, arena. So uh, this is a huge directory, or like it has a lot of files. Um, so there's like 1,500 files in here, and and some of them, or one of them, uh, could um, um it probably contains the uh, file. So someone here mentions in the chat, like, it took me three hours to get networking working on the VM. So here I want to point out that I actually didn't perform uh, basically any of the work within the virtual machine. So what I did was, like, I imported the virtual machine into uh, VirtualBox, and then I took the um, uh, virtual disk file and mounted it within my... Uh, Linux virtual machine and just like copied the files out so I could work with them uh, in this virtual machine so the part I'm doing now I actually did here in my uh, in my system not in the virtual machine that was provided um, so that and then because then I could use like all tools and you know not go insane from a crappy environment uh, anyway so this Quack 3 Arena is obviously not written from scra scratch. This is basically the Quake 3 Arena uh, repo. Um, um, modified. So I went on the internet and searched for Quake 3 Arena Git. And then you can find it on uh, GitHub. So you can take this uh, Git repository and you clone it. So then we have this. We have our uh, Quack 3 Arena from uh, ch Challenge and then the original Quake 3 Arena. And then we can do uh, a diff between these two, uh, a recursive, di recursive diff between these two directories. And we start doing that. We see there's a lot of stuff changed, like everywhere they have changed um, from Quake to Quack 3. So that's not interesting for us. So let's just add that we don't want to match uh, uh, we don't want to match uh, Quake or Quack in the uh, diff. Now we get that they have changed all the uh, ID software to KID software. So we don't want those uh, either because that's not interesting. Um, And, okay, this, I mean, I could probably clean this output up. So there is some uh, some changes still. So I wrote the uh, diff uh, to this um, uh, diff file and uh, open it up in a text editor. And just started, like browsing through it to see like where there are more interesting changes. Okay, so they uh, have changed some name from like Quake files to Quack files. Uh, 
so we could filter them if it's like too much but let's just like continue looking a little bit uh, and so this is basically what did like just looking through the remaining differences between uh, between the two repositories oh and here we find a part of the um, um, fast uh, fast inverse square root um, thing and I just got a question here on, on IRC if I answer messages at the same time and uh, yes except the stream is on a slight delay so it's there is a slight delay on me answering messages so if you write something in the chat I'll uh, I'll try to answer it so this if you have ever seen this before you recognize this constant as a part of the uh, fast uh, inverse square root uh, algorithm uh, it's this many thing and this is a part of the original uh, source what the fuck and here they've changed it to uh, what the hiccup and that's interesting because this is not changing quake to quack this is a, a different change so maybe hiccup is uh, the answer and it turns out uh, that it is um, so yeah that was basically how I did it so um, extract the stuff from the virtual machine, download the repository, compare it to the uh, original repository, throw out uh, obvious uninteresting stuff, look through the rest and we find this. Um, so that's the summary of the solution. Um, great. So now there was another weekend and then we're getting into the final five uh, challenges. <clears throat> so day 18. As pointed out, you could have just gone to the fast, fast inverse uh, function right away. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just like, I don't know, I didn't take that leap of faith. I just looked at it all. Um, so, um, yeah, in this uh, day 18, uh, we uh, are given a text file. my password.txt so it contains a list of uh, 1017 eight character uh, sequences and if you read the hint text here um, there are at least two key pieces that I used so he says he talks about his art and it says uh, it was either one or the others, which uh, could be a reference to XOR, and also uh, you can't take a quick glance, you have to take it all in. This is holistic art. So, uh, maybe we just like XOR all the passwords together. Um, that was my uh, first thought. So we read in the password, uh, strip all the white space. Uh, we zip them together. So we get all the first characters together, all the second characters together and so on. And uh, then uh, Yeah, then we, uh, oh, this is probably not 
this is interesting because I started out thinking that maybe you should uh, add or subtract them as I did uh, previous, but I'm just gonna check if it works by just. Uh, Do you need to do this or is it just so what I'm doing in this code is basically like I'm taking out the index in the alphabet. So yeah, you probably need to do this. Uh, and then XORing those together. Yeah, you definitely have to do this. So uh for for every uh, every uh, letter I uh, look up basically what index in the alphabet they are like A0, B1 and so on. And then I XOR them all together. So we do a reduce starting at zero and then just XORing in all the characters. And then we index into the alphabet and we get the password uh, insecure. Okay, so I, I'm told I don't need to do this. Yeah, that's... Uh, as I suspected. So the reason I have this function is that originally I didn't use XOR. I tried to uh, add them together or s subtract them like modulo 26 and then I wanted to do this like within the um, uh, alphabet. But then uh, I realized that yeah of course it's it's uh, XOR uh, and kept the code like this and it happens to give the same result and uh, it, yeah you can work out the maths uh, there and uh, yeah it will add up so um, basically what we could just do is just skip this whole part remove this um, and we should be able to do something like this uh, and then skip this whole thing Yeah, exactly. So uh, we can just skip the whole reduce uh, to uh, indices thing. So we basically, we just XOR all the ASCII values together. So yeah, that's uh, even more simple and clear. Uh, but basically, that's it. So just like you letterwise uh, XOR all the strings together. And the clues, yeah, uh, one or the other, and you have to take it all in. Let me do this. Um, okay, cool. Day nineteen. Um, <clears throat> so, um, here you're given a a zip file, the mood maker. Which contains Rust code, and um, if we look at, we can look at the Rust code, and uh, let's see what it's doing. So here is something about sound. Like the roof, the sixteenth, the melody, the tempo. Um, so yeah, it creates a MIDI file, Christmas Carol dot mid. Um, and so they have some functions here to write a chord, the right silence, and then they have this pattern they're writing out. So basically, this is a Rust uh, program which creates a MIDI file. Uh, that's uh, cute, and now I'm not really familiar with Rust, and uh, I did this on another computer. But uh, in the hint, it says something, or maybe it's in the README. Uh, uh, Rust version one dot twenty one dot x is required. When I did this on my uh, MacBook, like the default version it installed was like one dot. 22 or something so I don't know if that makes any difference but I had some 
problem uh, compiling this. Like I had to comment out this part and I had to remove, there was like a, an arrow here and I don't know Rust at all. So uh, I just like tried to compile it, looked at the uh, error messages from the compiler and uh, fiddled with the code a little bit until it compiled. So uh, yeah, that's a way. Uh, anyway, uh, I will not be able to, I don't think I have a Rust compiler on this machine, but basically if you uh, compile this, you get um, Yeah, so you get this uh, program here um, So now, but this uh, this is uh, uh, compiled on my MacBook, so this won't uh, won't run here. But if you run this, and yeah, someone pointed out that the the errors in the code is actually part of the of the challenge. So, um, um, anyway, if you run this program, it will print out this, uh, or it will create this file, uh, Christmas Carol dot. Uh, mid, let's see, can VLC play uh, MIDI files? Does it have a... No, it can't, but I foresaw this. So basically, this MIDI file, when I opened it on my Mac, it opened in GarageBand and I could play it. But what I did was also for this presentation uh, to uh, export an MP3 version of it. So if you run the MIDI file, it sounds... Oh wait, I have to activate the sounds again here. So you get this. No, wait, I have to turn my music off. You get this. And uh, it felt very familiar, but it took me a few, few moments to uh, realize, but then I realized that was uh, part of Sandstorm. Uh, so, the uh, solution to the challenge is uh, Sandstorm. Great pop cultural reference. 10 out of 10. Um, so, um, yes. Uh, so now we have just three left, and um, <clears throat> let's look at uh, number 20. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this was pretty cool, actually, even do, though it took way longer than it should. So, in this challenge, you were given a pretty broken QR code. <clears throat> so you're given this. Um, <clears throat> so we can clearly see it's a QR code, right? But uh, it's covered with, I guess it's supposed to, it, because like the story, in the story they're in a submarine or something, so I guess this is like seaweed uh, in the way and, uh, you know, it's green because it's stuff in the water. Um, anyway, we want to read this. So you can't read it uh, like this. So I started out trying to like repair the uh, the QR code. Um, I, I I created a new first like my first attempt was just like trying to paint over the uh, the broken code, and that didn't work. So I I created a, like a new because this is like a version one code, which means it's twenty one by twenty one pixels uh, big. So I created a new uh, uh, document, which was 21 by 21 pixels, and then I started like um, copying pixel for pixel uh, uh, the whole thing. And <clears throat> that uh, wasn't readable either. So uh, after a while, I realized that, okay, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna have to go deep on this one and like actually decode it by hand which I've never done before, but uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a good uh, learning experience. So basically, 
there are like the QR code format has there's a lot of la different layers to this decoding but the first thing you need to get is I'm not sure if my cursor yeah okay my cursor shows great because uh, up here in the QR code and also down here you have what they call like the encoding the format info so you take these five bits uh, and then you XOR them with the pattern 10101 uh, and you get a, a five bit number I'm gonna open up my uh, notes on this one like Yeah, so you get you take the the pattern here, one one zero one one. You XOR it with the mosque pattern one zero one zero one. Uh to get a, f a five bit number. You break this five bit number up into one uh, two bit number and uh and a three bit number. So the three bit number denotes which data mask is used for um um for the QR code so um let's see if they sh I think they should have a list here mask patterns so <clears throat> basically when creating a QR code at the end the idea is that you don't want uh large blocks of white you want like a a nice distribution between black and white in the image for for the readers to uh, better understand what is uh, to like uh, decode the picture better. Um, so what you do is like at the end when you have created your QR code, you flip uh, some bits in in the pattern according to one of the masks. And basically, when you create it, you try all the masks and you score them and pick the best one. Uh, but when you decode it, you just have to then uh, see which one was used and, and undo it. So in this particular case, um, they had used uh, mask number six, which is a really cruel... Uh, choice because like the 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 easy masks they are just like uh, flip every other row or flip every other column or things like that. But this uh, mask number six is this thing like if the row times the column uh, modulo two plus uh, the row times the column modulo three and this modulo two if that's zero uh, then you flip the bit. Um, so. What I did was, uh, in this step, uh, it was actually very useful that I tried uh, to create a new uh, image manually previously, because then I had um, like a black and white image uh, of the QR code. So what I then did was um, open this uh, the image with the uh, with the QR code in Python, <clears throat> and then. Uh, and then uh, look at uh, like iterate through all the pixels and if they <clears throat> match this condition for the mask we flip it otherwise we don't and then we get something like this so like when you do this for a real uh, QR code you shouldn't like you shouldn't care about these uh, corner stuff, but we're just doing a quick and dirty thing here. And then uh, QR codes are read in like a snake-like pattern, starting from the bottom right and then going in a zigzag pattern, like up and down and up and down again. And they do it uh, with a two-pixel wide path. So let's see if. Uh, I think this this should be an image like this uh, website was really useful when uh, when doing this uh, so 
yeah so the data is placed like in a kind of snake pattern like this but with two pixel wide columns so they go in a zigzag pattern within uh, uh within the column uh and then when they're going downwards they go zigzag in the other way and then the data is encoded like this first you have um the first four pixels down in uh, in this bottom uh, they uh, represent a four bit number which says which type of uh, content this QR code contains and so you should read it like zero zero one zero uh, which is an alphanumeric uh, QR code uh, and then that is followed by um, did I ever write this down? Yeah, so that's follow then. Uh, you can look, uh, you can look up um, uh, in in the specification that says like if you have an alphanumeric uh, QR code, then afterward you will have a nine bit number indicating the length of the QR code. So. Um, Uh, you uh, start reading here, so it's like zero 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 one zero one. So I have written this down here. Uh, so that's five. So we're looking for a, a alphanumeric QR code uh, of length five. Uh, so that's not too bad. Um, and then. Uh, you can start going upward. When I actually did this, uh, I used like Photoshop and like painted out like a, a grid to help counting. But basically, you just go like zigzag up this way, uh, like this far, and then you go down again here. Um, so in alphanumeric uh, QR code. Uh, the way it works is that you group the letters um, in like in pairs, and you can have 45 different uh, characters. Let's see if I can find uh, um, QR code alpha numeric table. Oh, not AR code, QR code. Yeah, okay. So basically what they do is they take the letters in pairs and they take um, the first letter uh, times 45 plus the second letter. So that gives you a unique number for each for each pair. So you look up the like the index in this, in this table. So it's... it's um, and you get a, a number which you encode into uh, an 11-bit uh, number and you put it uh, in the QR code. So to decode it, we just go the other way around. We read an 11-bit number um, and then we factor it into the like quotient and the modulo uh, with 45 as a divider. So reading up here, we get... Uh, yeah, I kind of lost uh, track here in the image, but we do get zero one one zero one one zero zero one zero one, which is eight hundred and sixty nine, and eight hundred sixty nine is forty five times nineteen plus fourteen, and then we can look in the table and we see that nineteen is J and fourteen is E. So the first two uh, characters are J E, and then we turn around here and go down in the QR code image and we read out zero one 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 zero 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 one one zero which is uh, 966 which is 45 times 21 plus 21 and 21 is L so we have LL and uh, then there is a rule that if you have an odd length uh, string then the last one will be read as uh, a six bit uh, number so you read the final six bits, which is uh, one zero 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 one zero, which is thirty four, and thirty four is a Y. 
So the final character is Y, and the final solution is uh, J E L L Y Jelly, which is the solution to the challenge. Um, so it's it's uh, it was a little bit fun going through and like manually decoding a, a QR code. I haven't done that before. I guess it's like good knowledge to have. Um, okay. <clears throat> so now for the final two challenges. Wow. Um, so now challenge or day 21. Um, here we are given, there's something about the labyrinth. We're given a map which looks like this. And I was actually never really able to understand how to read it. But like maybe in hindsight, this was entry, but I don't know. I, I thought it might have been exit as well. So I had no idea, uh, but I didn't really care about that. And we also get like an IP address and a port. So um, if we connect to this IP import. Oh, we are in the Mudrix again. So you can go up. Oh, and here you can go different directions. So this is the labyrinth. Uh, we have no idea uh, where we are or where we're going. So um, like maybe the sensible way would have to make, be like make sense of the map and use it. Uh, but I just said uh, screw that and write a, a bot instead that will walk the maze uh, for me. So um, basically what I did was uh, uh, start by like parsing the message uh, we get. Um, and if we can look at the format here, so we parse like this line and uh, then you have the different uh, options where to go uh, north, south, down, east. So we parse those out and we build up uh, a graph. So we have a start node uh, and for every start node, we have a, a number of uh, directions you can go. And we start numbering. So there is an assumption here that uh, like there is no loop in the maze, so that this is like a, a true maze, or what do you call them? Uh, and even if it's not, that's not really a, a huge problem. It would just make the algorithm slower. So we start numbering every room. So we start at room zero, and then uh, we see, okay, we can go in every direction. So we, we number these rooms, one, two, three, four. And uh, we also keep track of the last direction we took. Uh, let's see, like the core of this. So every time we walk into a node, we um, take note what direction we took to get into that, uh, to the next node. Because then when we parse out uh, the, the direction we can go in that node, we take care so that um, basically the direction that is the opposite of what we just took, which is what leads back to the last one, is not numbered as a new node, but it's instead reuse, it reuses the old uh, number. So that way we, uh, by walking around the maze, we map out uh, like all the, we name each intersection and then um, how they are connected. And then we basically just do a, a breath first search through the maze. Uh, so, and that has like, a, we start by saying like, we want to go to the lowest numbered node that we have seen, but not yet been to. Uh, and then we use uh, this calculate path, which is just a breath first search to calculate what steps you have to take uh, 
to to get there so in the first iteration it will see um, we can actually if we run it I think it will display uh, oh yeah I'm gonna uh, remove the debug output so here it counts like the rooms um, it has visited and you see you can stop it <coughs> so in every step here it says like now I'm I'm walking to 27 and to get there I need to go up up north east east south uh, so and then when it managed to do that it adds 27 to the list of uh, seen rooms and then it says now I'm gonna walk to 28 and then it calculates the path and so on so uh, you can uh, run this and it takes like uh, a few minutes for it to because they're like I don't know 200 rooms or something uh, so it takes a few minutes for this to run but in the end uh, you get to a special uh, room uh, which says You've discovered Duncan as he sees you enter the room. He makes a run for it. Uh, weird, yada yada. And then you get the floor is covered in uh, and uh, this download link. So there's a step two uh, to uh, to this. Um, so that's how you solve the maze part, uh, or that's how I solved the maze part. It's probably not uh, the uh, how it was intended. You should probably have used the map. But uh, you know, why why be smart when you can just use brute force? Um, so you get this comics dot zip uh, when you download, uh, and this is probably the most bullshit challenge in the whole uh, thing. So I'm just going to explain uh, like how the solution works and I'm not going to not going to even attempt to explain how you would arrive at this. So in this comics.zip you have a lot of JPEG files and a reminder to self.txt. So if we look at the comics uh, or the images, there's, these are uh, from various comics and uh, some random collection and they are all uh, have dates and then the reminder to self uh, has basically four parts to it the first part is 26 uh, sentences sorted in alphabetical order uh, and they all reference uh, one specific day of the year and uh, they also have a year and these dates are ordered in uh, ascending um, uh, ascending order except for down here where there was a slight mistake because these two are f uh, flipped so all saints day is uh, on the on the 1st of november and the dia des de los muertos is on the 2nd uh, of uh, November so these should these should be the other way around but that does not really matter the solution still works uh, and then you have this hint everybody talks what's important is the last word and then you have a reminder to self with four lines like which come together thing voodoo warning Eritrea nobody here is the hidden man Macaw startled by a blind rat with wings. And then you have this little thing, but the answer is at the end of uh, all the roads, and all the roads lead to the answer. Like Collette's conjecture, they all converge at it. When you find the place every road leads to, you will have found your answer. Okay, so now I'm going to explain how all these things uh, fit together. Uh, so what you do is um you take any word in these uh 
uh, comics or any last word um and uh, then you take <clears throat> so let's let's say we start here you take any a word you take the last two characters of the word and then you look at uh the second to last character a and you take now uh, um let's see if i get the right order let's it's uh, it's one way or the other so this is an a so you look at a in the list and you take this uh date i'm going to uh bring out my other which uh, yeah so um here i just like wrote down the dates and the years um so for a you take the date of that day and then you take the other um other letter w and for that you take the year on that one <clears throat> so and then you put them together to get one date um oh wait i'm just gonna check that No, it's probably the other way around. You take the second to last. Uh, uh, wait a minute. No, yeah, exactly. So you take the the second to last letter, and and the, and the dates from from that one and you take the last letter and you take the year from that one you put them together so you get a new date like 1942 11 and then you look at that file and that looks like startled by a blind rat with wings so a blind rat with wings is a bat uh, so this describes this image he's startled by a, a bat and then you take you look at the other clue, like everybody talks, what's important is the last word. Um, um, yeah, and also a comment here on, on the chat. Um, I did not go back to the start every time I walk in the labyrinth. I um, uh, There was a comment here, like since they're talking about the complexity of the, uh, the labyrinth algorithm, I do not walk back to the start. I calculate like the path from where I'm standing in the labyrinth to where I want to go. Uh, so it's still not super efficient because if you have two branches, I will go like I will advance one step in one branch and then go one step in the other branch and one step and then back and forth. So there will be a lot of running back and forth through stuff I've already explored. However, uh, it also means that the algorithm will work even if the labyrinth has uh, loops or branches which are infinitely uh, long. It's just not very fast. Um, so, anyway, back to back to the second part here. So, everybody talks. What's important is the last word. The last word of this is bat. So, we go back here again. We go start over with the word bat. So, bat has A as the second to last letter, still uh, 1 1, and T as the last letter. So, we're we want to look at 1930, uh, January 1st. So what do we get here? We get this. And this says uh, creamsicle as the last um, word. So that uh, ends with an L-E. So L is 4th of May. And E is 1954. So let's go to 1954. Oh, and it's the same image. So now we're stuck in a loop. Because if we take creamsicle again, we will get back to this image. So this relates to the last thing. Like, 
um, when you find the place every road leads to, you will have found the answer. So basically, the, this algorithm is set up such that basically whatever word, whatever last word of any image you pick, you will always end up on creamsicle and then you will uh, be stuck in a loop on creamsicle. So the answer to the challenge is creamsicle. Uh, yeah. And I mean, on one hand, I think the like core idea of this puzzle is cool, but there is like no way in hell uh, that you would figure this out without more clues or I don't know. So basically what basically everyone who solved this challenge uh, did was um, either like what, because I started just looking at like the last word, if you put together like this date and this year, uh, you get one date, you look at that image and you look at the last word of that and just write them down. Some of these does not exist though. Um, and then just guess on all of these words as the uh, answer. And luckily creamsicle is actually in this list. Some people just like took the last word of every panel and just started guessing and found the answer. So yeah, I, I don't think anyone like really solved it properly. Uh, so it, it's a, it's a, it's a good, uh, uh, yeah, some, someone put it out, look at all the images and choose the weirdest word. Uh, that's a very valid, uh, solution. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cool core idea, but, uh, it's too difficult, I think. Um, so then we are now at, uh, yeah, so the, the answer was creamsicle. So now we are um, at the last challenge. Wow. Um, okay. So in this challenge, uh, we see like this evil duck. There's a, like an evil duck appearing in the in the last, uh, the second to last challenge, and he opens a portal to hell, and he has this um, like incantation or whatever that he summons the portal and then you have a portal to hell uh, which is apparently a zip file did not know um, and if we look at it it's encrypted so <clears throat> we need to find a password and we can probably find it from this uh, uh, spell or this uh, text so let's look at that. Um, there are a few parts to it. So first of all, it starts with, Oh, Belphegor, prime lord of wit. Um, and so that's interesting, like prime Belphegor. So let's start by just Googling uh, Belphegor. So uh, there's like some history here. And then suddenly the palindromic number is known as a Belphegor's Prime. Ah, that's that's interesting, since we're talking about like data and stuff. So this uh, probably is a reference to this number. And then it says, uh, loose twine unit thine. So this is like fake old English style text. Uh, so basically uh, it's subtract two. And then multifold, like multiply, I guess, by the dozen, uh, and remove these short units mine. And this is a huge number in Latin. Uh, so let's just Google Translate this. Uh, so you, if you write this number down, and here I did. Uh, a mistake because I just assumed that it would just go in descending order but here they skip quintillion so that part should be just zeros uh, yeah and also uh, down here they say milia two times but one of them should be and that does not make sense because that's not how you say uh, 
the word. So I would just I just assume that this one was supposed to be million, uh, and that's correct. So if you translate this, you get this number. Uh, except you don't because I didn't mistake. So what you get is actually this number. And uh, so let's see how the text continues. Uh, forthwith thou art the phrase we see clouded by twofold width. So this twofold is probably like binary something. We probably should like uh, convert the, a number from like into text. Uh, but thou lacketh an empty herald. Uh, empty herald could be like zero. So maybe there's a zero missing like somewhere. I don't know. Uh, so I tried doing this calculation. Let's just insert this these three zeros where I forgot them. So okay, we get a negative number. That's kind of strange. So there's, there's probably something missing because I think we're looking for a positive number because that's the thing that makes sense, right? Uh, so some of the something here should be larger or something here should be smaller. Uh, and it's probably not this. And not the minus two because that's pretty clear, I think. So maybe this should be larger. So if we take a look again here, it says multifold by the dozen, and then there is an exclamation mark, and it's like there's an emphasis on it as well. So this is this is a fun little clever thing. So maybe they don't mean twelve. Maybe they mean um, like what do you call it uh, in English? Is it Yeah, factorial. That's that's the word I'm looking for. So maybe they look. Uh, um. So. Yeah. Uh. So maybe it's not twelve. It's actually twelve factorial. So twelve factorial is this number. So if we. Um. Try to perform this calculation is instead. We get a positive number. Oh, that's uh, that's a good sign. Uh, so um, what we can do then is just um, convert it to hexadecimal, and we take this and we decode this into text. Uh, and I did some kind of mistake here. Um, let's compare to what I did here. So basically, he, I, 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 um, I wrote this code for it. So <laughs> here's a, a factorial function. So we multiply factorial 12 times uh, this uh, prime minus 2 and then subtract this whole thing and we Convert it to hexadecimal and uh, and we get procrastination. How did this go wrong here? Yeah, uh, okay, at least it works. <clears throat> here, so you take the you take the um, this like poem, you calculate this number, and then you convert the number to like hex, and you treat every every byte as a character instead, and you print out the char characters, and you get uh, procrastination. So <clears throat> um, that's the password. So then we can decrypt. Uh, the zip file, so we use this like OpenSSL uh, command. Uh, oh yeah, it's also uh, um, uh, 
Oh yeah, okay. Someone pointed out I en I entered the zeros in the wrong place. That makes sense. Thank you, you one. Uh, so you use this OpenSSL command in the in this uh, text. It says it says here like it's encrypted with AES uh, 256 CBC. So we use the OpenSSL tool AES 256 CBC decrypt this in file as the portal. Uh, put it in uh, deck.zip and use the password uh, procrastination. And if we do that, we get this uh, zip file, uh, which contains a recording from hell uh, slash hell recording dot OGV. Okay, we unzip it and uh, we can play it. So let me pause my music, I turn on the volume, um, and okay, so this sounds like we have two things. There's some kind of noise in the background, and it also sounds very much like uh, someone uh, talking in reverse or like reversed speech. It's very characteristic uh, sound. Um, so, okay, here's some kind of pig demon. I don't know. Cool stuff. Um, oh my god, it moves. Okay, uh, interesting. I do not think that there is anything interesting in the, in the video except for like the experience. So let's focus on the... Uh, <laughs> okay, it's apparently Charizard in the, in, in the movie. Um, so let's focus on the uh, audio. So let's open the recording in uh, Audacity. Um, okay, so we had two things. We had noise and we had stuff uh, being said in reverse. So stuff being said in reverse is probably most straightforward stuff. So let's just um, reverse the sound and listen to it. Rush. Heresy. Violence. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, we have. Wait, there should be more. There should be longer. Let's let me redo this. Something went wrong. The recording should be longer than this. We reverse it. Uh, something is acting up with uh, my. Okay. Uh, anyway, if you do reverse it, I think I was. You get this. No, this is the radio recording. Let me open it. So I exported the sound from the video file. Uh. Okay, so if we reverse this. Read. Okay, now it works. So there was something with the play deck that was strange. But we're here, it's reading out some words. Heresy. Violence. Yeah, and then it loops. So it, it, it does this uh, two times. So, uh, 
it's nine words and uh, I tried to write them down so it was clearly greed gluttony treachery wrath lust and then I had a hard time hearing what is it but I think it was limbo and this one actually I got wrong uh, so I, I couldn't really hear what they said and there was heresy and violence so we have these nine words um, okay so what can we do with them we still have that like really strange noise in the background uh, that we don't know what it's what it is and like a really standard thing to look then when you have like strange sounds in your in the recording is to look at a spectrogram uh, and in audacity you want to have more fine-grained bucketing oh look at that so in the spectrogram there is text and actually we should also increase the range here so we get the full dynamic range because there is text up here as well um, so let's start transcribing these um, and okay and so Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, someone suggested using black and white, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So if you transcribe these, uh, you get um, here. You have. No, I zoomed in too much. Okay. So what it says is uh here it says four four four. So we write that down. It says double the five. Uh slaves of nine. And actually, in the text, they had a hint about that it's wrong. It's supposed to be slaves of the nine. Slaves to the nine. So we write that down instead. Uh, it's white color three. Ultra one OST. Uh, six of a Titan. Uh, it says, I am two. And up here, it says... Uh, gurus of eight and here it's tango and the remaining number is seven so it's seven tango um okay so we have nine uh like phrases with a number in each of them so let's just shut this down and and we have nine words so if we put some of this in like uh if we number them in the order they are uh read so uh, actually now the question is like there's basically two ways to order this either like in the original uh order they are read so that would be the opposite order of uh, how we've written them down so let's just try the googling we, we, we'll try both variations so let's try googling the eighth word gurus of heresy uh something about it doesn't like really i know not the perfect fit let's try the other one gurus of gluttony Okay, so that's a, that's a song. So maybe that's the theme. So slaves to the nine would then be slaves to the greed. 
Uh, and that's also a song. Okay, so maybe uh, these are all songs. So let's uh, write them down. So by googling all of these, you I get this. Uh, we have, and here I uh, I did a mistake because here it's supposed to be like uh, the actual uh, musician and not uh, from where it came from. But basically, I am heresy is a song by I am heresy. Very creative, and. Uh, this one, yeah, this was the word I couldn't um, hear what it said, but it actually says fraud, which fits uh, the theme very nicely. So, white color fraud is a song. Color, the color. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I also misheard or misread the color. This should be color. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a, a song as well. Uh, and then we have Limbo 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 uh, of by Jane Aiko, Double Dust from Umek, Wrath of a Titan, The Games, uh, Treasure Tango from Goodnight 2, Gurus of Gluttony by Escape from the Zoo, Slaves to the Greed by Dead and Finland. And then if you uh, read the uh, first letter of each of these artist names, well, in my version, it became this. But what word could this be? Yeah, it could be misjudged, uh, which is the solution to the challenge. Finally. It's a pretty pretty cool one, I think. Um, so that's how you solve the final challenge of uh, the Tule calendar. And for completeness, I'm also going to show you this like minus one. This it was originally meant to be. Um, like challenge seven or eight i think but due to a bug in the code they revealed it on the first day so they had to replace it basically you were given this image um <clears throat> and uh, this image has very few colors in it so what I did was, first of all, I did like the usual stuff when looking at the image. Look at the metadata, nothing interesting. Uh, check if there's like any other file hidden within it. Doesn't seem like there is. Um, and <clears throat> then <clears throat> I took, I extracted like the, the raw uh, color data from the uh, image and um, if you look at it uh, so these are like the, the pixels uh, and here there are some letters so IMA is a one of the colors if you look at the uh, and then you have Jin so imagine And uh, there should be a third one, Ari. So the colors, if you look at them as characters, instead spell out imaginary, which is uh, the solution to this one. Um, yeah, so that's... Um, um, that's the solution to the um, your calendar 2017. Um, I hope you played and enjoyed it, or at least enjoyed my walkthrough of it. And uh, yeah, I managed to get second place. So Arcane Game, the Arcane Game team won this year again. They are pretty good. 
but there are also multiple people, so I'm pretty satisfied as well. It was a great game, looking forward to it next year, and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to you all.